Thank you. Thank you, Ben, for your guidance and your friendship. Now, I hope you all are as pumped as I am to be right here in Florida. Shoulder to shoulder with ALA Central and South Florida chapters. If only, if only just to say happy pride and Immigrant Heritage Month. I wanna start by expressing my gratitude, starting with my chapter, Ayla Carolinas. I would have never pursued national leadership, but for your support and encouragement. Thank you to Ayla's professional leadership team, Ben, Grace, Angie, and my BFF, Kay Cisla. I don't know how you do it, but every year you all manage to strike the right balance between supporting each president's individual vision while maintaining an overall sense of continuity and cohesion. The professional directors at AILA are simply the best. Each of you have taken the time at one point or another to support me from providing specific advice or talking points or simply explaining to me how something works. To Jeremy Robbins, it has been an absolute pleasure working with you and deepening the AILA Council Partnership. The elected executive committee, Kelly, Jeff, Alexis, Jackie, and Alan, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to Mr. OG in a moment. I'm sorry, well, I'm not really sorry, uh, for the love fest, but you are all my chosen family. It has been a blessing to serve with each of you. And finally, to my wife, Cindy, and my kids, Ethan and Sophie, I love you with all my heart and soul. You are the everything. Now, I was elected ALA secretary in 2017. Now. Donald Trump, year one. Most of my time on the executive committee, we've been playing defense on policy and governmental relations, from ending family separation to keeping the DACA program and TPS designations alive, to fighting unfettered enforcement stripped of all humanity and common sense. We push back against these evil policies and grown our membership to almost 17,000. But during these dark days, we also work together to strengthen our association from within. From the presidency of Ana Luisa Padilla to present, I've been able to work with this amazing team on so much. We passed a resolution calling for the creation of an Article I independent immigration court. We created a civility code. We made significant changes to our bylaws. We launched AILA University. We restructured AILA's membership dues and put into place a biennial review of those dues. We adopted the recommendations of our expanding legal representation task force that guide us to this day. We started sections for removal defense and for family-based immigration. And we began, as Ben mentioned, the multi-year, multi-million dollar AILA Anywhere technology upgrade. It's a whole lot. On a personal note, I had the opportunity to testify before the House Judiciary Committee about independent immigration courts, to be interviewed by the best reporters on the immigration beat, thanks to that guy there, George, work hand in hand with legends in our field, and most importantly to my children, end up quoted in Rolling Stone magazine. <laughs> this has been an experience of a lifetime. Just this AILA year, we've added almost 800 new members. Yeah. And we put newer members to work. Almost 20% of national committee appointments went to an AILA member who has never previously served on a national committee. AILA was mentioned over 2,600 times by the press and fielded over 600 press inquiries, 
elevating our reputation as the leading experts in immigration law. We implemented changes to make the National Day of Action more strategic and launched a political engagement task force in advance of the 2024 elections. Since the beginning of the Biden administration, we've worked hard to establish robust engagement with the White House and departments of Homeland Security, state, justice, and labor, and leaned into USCIS proposed filing fee, uh, the filing fee proposed rule, USCIS and DOS backlogs, EOR reforms and policy changes, and changes in EB-5. AILA campaigned for the creation of an independent immigration court and obtained the introduction of legislation, the Real Courts Rule of Law Act, and the USCIS Case Backlog and Transparency Act, something that past President Marquetta Lent feels strongly about, that was introduced again in Congress. But even our closest of friends can sometimes disagree. Together with the American Immigration Council, we've sued the Biden administration over I-601A waiver delays and participated in SCOTUS cases on amicus. The council has something like 27 lawsuits pending right now against the Biden administration. We are so proud of this work that's making a real difference in the lives of our clients. But we work not only to just advance immigration law and policy, but also our members' professional development. We published our marketplace survey uh, providing exclusive economic insights into the practice of immigration law. We launched AILA's Business School for Immigration Attorneys. We conducted our first Federal Court Litigation Institute. And just last week, we released High Stakes, High Stakes Asylum, an in-depth report based on 300 practitioner surveys. And this executive committee, starting under the leadership of Alan Orr, made an intentional effort to go to our members instead of waiting for members to come to us. We've appeared at every chapter that would have us, from New England to the California's chapter conference and everything in between and beyond. Canada, RDC, LACC, APAC, GMS. Our message to members is through AILA resources, engagement, litigation, and community. We are stronger than ever. We reminded everyone in the words of the American Immigration Council and the Ag Council that we all have the power to reach out and make someone feel like they belong. We're here. And we're not going back to those dark times in 2017. We see you. So say it with me. We see you. To our members who have lost the freedom to determine their own reproductive futures, we see you. To our members who are having history literally whitewashed, we see you. To our members being denied their humanity and forced back into the closet, we see you. And to our immigrant members and clients being told there is no place for you in America, we see you. And why? Because we are ALA, all of us, all of us. And we will fight for justice and due process hand in hand together. I want to thank you for stepping up and thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve as your ALA president. Thank you. And now, on to the main event. My friend and the 77th AILA president, Farshad Oji.
When Farshad was elected ALA secretary in 2018, I will be honest, I hardly knew him at all. I am, well, me, a litigator, removal defense practitioner from the Carolinas chapter who grew up in South Central Virginia and lives 90 minutes from the place he's born. Farshad is a business practitioner and just so damn chic and cosmopolitan. I mean, really, I was like, would I even be able to work with this guy? <laughs> because our team works so closely together under often stressful conditions, I sought Farshad out, inviting him to breakfast at AC 2018. Marquetta, you might remember because she sat in with us. That breakfast was, in the words of Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca, the beginning of a beautiful friendship. He is a true friend. And really, not being trite, as we often call each other, a brother. And despite initial impressions, we had so much in common. We have both owned our own law firms. We both have experience in asylum and removal defense. Our boys were both at New York University at the exact same time. Congratulations, Darren, for graduating. <laughs> and both actually, will, I learned yesterday, both of the, our boys will soon be studying in London at the exact same time. Freaky as that. Uh, but fundamentally, the, the biggest thing that Farshad and I have in common is that we both had to make our own luck in America. Farshad was born in Iran and has been a refugee not once but twice. He became an attorney in Turkey and at one point was working with refugees for UNHCR. But like virtually all of our clients, he dreamed of America. He pursued his dream and at the age of 26, won the diversity visa lottery and started to learn his third language, English. I'm curious whether we've ever had a DV lottery winner become ALA president. Initially unable to practice law in the United States, Farshad enrolled in an LLM program in Florida and did anything he could to get by. He was an attendant at his uncle's gas station. He was a waiter at Olive Garden. It is the classic immigration story, or really the Horatio Alger type of American story. Through hard work and an insatiable entrepreneurial spirit, Farshad got his LLM and his bar license and started his own law firm. He initially handled asylum and removal defense, similar to his time at UNHCR. But Farshad, my friend, was in love with business. Not only did he learn from AILA and start taking on business immigration cases, Farshad himself became a serial entrepreneur. Some of you old folks may remember the NBC TV show, Ed, which is about a lawyer who also owned a bowling alley. Well, the Farshad show was about a trilingual immigrant attorney who was also a California a uh, restaurateur, amazing. He's also the most generous person I've ever met. Don't you dare express interest in anything, of, in anything around Farshad because the next thing you know, it will arrive at your front door. This aura ring, XCOM. If you have your aura ring, can you raise your hand? <laughs> they all came to us because Farshad cares about us and our health. And no, Farshad, I don't think I will ever get the eight to nine hours of sleep a night that you demand. But I promise you, I'll, I'll, I'll make it a goal. I'll make it a goal. To close, Farshad, I am so happy to have spent the last five years with you. We've discussed tricky cases, 
restructuring ALA's dues, getting resolutions through the Board of Governors, but we've also shared many laughs and some tears. We've talked about everything under the sun from practice management to silly stuff like crypto. I'm a better lawyer, business owner, entrepreneur because of your friendship. In short, I am honored to call you a friend. And we, the members of ALA, are also lucky to have you. So now, I present to you the 77th President of the American Immigration Lawyers Association, Farshad Oji. <laughs> 